When writing code, the most important thing to do is solving a problem. But something that is also essential is to write code that solves the problem fast. One way to measure how fast the program solves a problem could be by measuring the execution time. An issue with this approach is that every time we measure, we could get varying execution times because of external factors like heat or different computers. But luckily, we have a way to measure speed independently. It's called Big O Notation. That's why we're gonna cover in this video what Big O Notation is, common O notations that appear, following with a code example, which we're gonna analyze using the Big O Notation. So, stay tuned. All right, what is Big O Notation? Big O Notation is just like said before, a way to measure our performance of a program independently. We are not simulating the code on any machine. Rather, we look at the structure of our code and analyze how many operations get executed in proportion to our data input. Also, when speaking of input, when inputting data, for example, sorting an array, we could do three different types of inputs, best case, average case, and worst case. But in computer science, most of the time, when not stated otherwise, we want to input the worst case for our analysis. Another thing is, Big O notation doesn't consider small terms and factors. For example, let's say n is our input variable and we would now get this expression. This would be nothing more than O of n cube. This happens out of the reason because O notation just does a comparison on a large scale. So these terms and factors are insignificant for the analysis. All right, then let's talk about the most common Big O notations that appear. The first one and fastest one is O of 1, constant time. This is the case when the program is not dependent on the input size. For example, when we would access an element in an array. A little side note, even if we would access three times an array element, it might be three steps, but it's still constant steps. So it stays O of 1. O of log n, logarithmic time. This is usually the case when the size of a problem gets reduced by a certain factor in every step typically by half. O of n, linear time. This case appears when our operations in our code grow proportionally slash linear to the given input size. The most common example for this one is when we would iterate through an array with a for loop. O of n log n, log linear time. This commonly appears in efficient sorting algorithms like merge sort or quick sort on the average time. The reason behind this complexity is that the input is usually split into smaller parts, the log n divisions, and each part requires O of n operations to be processed. O of n to the power to a. Polynomial time. This case occurs when the number of operations grow as the power of the input size. This case is the most typical case when we have nested for loops, meaning loops in loop. For example, a loop in a loop would be O of n squared, and a loop in a loop in a loop would be O of n cubed and so on. Another crucial aspect of polynomial time is the size of the constant a. If the constant a is large enough, it can make an algorithm go from highly efficient to impractical, slow and useless. O to 2 to the power of n, exponential time. Here the execution times double with each additional input element. This is typical for recursive algorithms that try to discover a solution by exploring all possibilities, also known as brute force. Something important to mention about exponential time is that even for small inputs like n equals 100, the estimated time to solve this problem with our computing power of today would be 2.9 million times longer than the age of the universe. Okay, then let's do an example of how we can analyze our time complexity with Big O. So we have a function analyze complexity where we are given an array and a target value as input. Our n where we make our whole analysis dependent on is the length of our array. All right, then let's look at line three and four, where we have an array axis and a print statement. Both of these statements happen in constant time. So we have O of one for both. Then let's go over to line six and seven, where the same scenario as before, both are just simple operations of declaring a value. So just like before, both O of one. Okay, then to the while loop. This is going to be more interesting and we also need some sharp eyes and sharp mind to grasp what is happening inside this loop. Let's do a little drawing first for better understanding. So we have a left and a right variable, which represent pointers to the beginning and the end of our array. Then in the for loop, we are doing a calculation of the mid, what is basically just between left and right. What then happens is we are having three different cases. The 
first one returns the mid pointer if current mid is equal to the target. The second case updates the left pointer to mid plus one if the target is bigger than the element mid. Similarly things happen in case three. If mid is bigger than the target value, the right pointer gets updated with mid minus one. Then it happens everything again. If we look closely now, aren't we not just halving our array every single time? So basically we're having n elements in k iterations. After every iteration, we are halving the array. And after k iteration, there's only one element left. So basically we have n over two to the power of k equals one. If we would solve this real quick now for k, we would get k equals log base two of n. Meaning after k iterations, we did log base two of n operations. So our while loop has basically a time complexity of O log n. All right, then let's look at the next lines. At this point, it's pretty easy now. We have a loop in a loop, and this is nothing more than O to n squared. And the last line is just the return statement. So O of one. All right, we went over the code now. We had a couple of O of ones, and we had O of log n. And lastly, we also have O of n squared. So our final answer for this whole function is O of n squared, because this is the biggest term out of them all. All right, and we are done with our analysis. All right, and that's it for this video. If you want more content about CS topics, especially data structures and algorithms, you can like and subscribe. See you next time. Bye.